Hey guys, Mars Singing here, bringing you another Dragon Ball Z Dokkan battle video. And so yesterday I did the top five LRs on global tier list, according to my own personal opinion. And uh, the video did decently well, had a lot of comments, had a lot of feedback from you guys. Um, I made a big point at the beginning of the video, which I'm not going to completely retread for this one, although obviously the same thing applies. Um, but I made it very clear when I make these kind of tier lists, it's just for fun. This is like all based on my opinion, which I realize everybody rates units differently. So if you don't agree with the placings, then feel free to let me know down below in the comments in a civil manner. I'm happy to respond to all comments and further discuss and debate over all of the units placements. But there's no need to be rude about it, basically. I already got some funny comments in the first video where the funniest one I think I saw was somebody. Uh, I'm not trying to call out anyone specific, so I'm not going to say their name. Don't go like dig through and look for the comment and like you know reply to them or whatever but somebody in the same comment uh mentioned the fact that you know oh, it's only a mobile phone game so we shouldn't be getting too uh pressed about other people's opinions but then at the same time said that not only did he disagree that cooler was number one but that there is no logical argument for putting cooler at number one which even if you're saying it in a more so polite way is basically saying that somebody who thinks cooler is at number one is stupid because there's no logical argument for him to be at number one. So as I tried to highlight in the response to that person, just because you don't agree with an argument doesn't mean that it's not logical, because it kind of implies that you are the supreme being of all correctness, and if someone doesn't agree with you, obviously their arguments are not logical. So I always welcome fun, discussion, and debate. I feel like this one is going to be interesting, especially given some of the units. So, you know, I more than welcome disagreement and discussion as long as it is is in a civil manner so today we are going to do the top five easy a's for global although i should specify easy a tur's um because lr's throwing lr's into the mix gets a little bit weird um but and of course remember just like the previous video for the lr's this is for global only so that's why you will not see jp easy a's that are not out yet on global um, the list might be very different when future ones come out, but this is how it is as of right now on Global according to me. So, we're going to start off with an honourable mention who I did not put on the list, which I immediately know is going to trigger the hell out of some people. But, the reason why I wanted to give him his own separate category and start the video off talking about him, is obviously when it comes to Tech God Goku... Uh, if I'm jumping into like Red Zone or, you know, Cell, well, Cell Max is not a good example because it's only one stage and he is a movie boss. But if I'm jumping into a Red Zone stage that is not a pure Saiyan or a movie boss, even if I bring the tech gods and like their team, I'm not bringing this Goku on the team. Now, he can still be good defensively after supering, especially if you get the two rainbow orbs and he raises defense on super, but he's not going to be tanking like super attacks from red zone bosses. Like, he's not going to tank Omega's uh, super attack at the end of the second turn of the final phase. Whereas if Omega was a movie boss or a pure Saiyan, he absolutely would. So, this one is very situational. Um, if you're going up against a movie boss or a pure Saiyan, difficult event. You could easily argue that this guy's number one. But if you're going up against, again, like Omega, the Shadow Dragons, Red Zone Freezer, uh, not cooler because he's a movie boss, um, you probably don't even bring this guy on the team. So he alternates between either being number one or not even top five, depending on the event that you're playing. So I think that's very important to mention. If you only want to rate units by their highest possible ceiling in their best case scenario, then obviously he would be top five and potentially even number one. But for the sake of the overall list, because I would personally don't ever use him in events where you're not fighting these two particular enemies, I thought it'd be kind of weird to put him in the top five. And then I also wanted to give a shout out and honorable mention to our boy Tech, Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta. I almost put him at number five. Um, after a little bit of deliberation and then decided not to. Um, I do think he's very good. The fact that he doesn't have Saiyan Raw is obviously very unfortunate. But he's a solid unit. He's still on some decent teams. Um, the 70% chance to counter is obviously very, very strong. Debuffs the enemy, so good for Super Battle Road. And then, yeah, I mean, just the 75% chance to counter. After supering when he's fully built up, his defense is really, really good. But... 
He probably doesn't quite make it into the top five, depending on your opinions about the units who are in the top five and how much you value uh, consistency over RNG. But, you know, as you guys know, if the LR tier list is anything to go by with me having Cooler at number one, I don't mind a little bit of uh, RNG related shenanigans as long as the unit's ceiling is incredibly high and fun to use so honorable mention to tech gogeta i do still think he is a solid uh unit but he probably comes in if i was doing like a full top 10 then he probably comes in at number six bearing in mind obviously what we said already about god goku so going on to the official Number five on my top five global easy ATUR list, we have STR Ultimate Gohan. Now, those of you who've been around the channel for a while and been to a lot of my streams, I've talked about this a lot, I've mentioned it on Twitter before as well, I am not a fan of units that have a chance to guard. Um, I think it's a very odd mechanic. Um, one of the worst things about it is something that like Goresh has always said, where if we had some sort of indication in the game, that your unit was not going to guard that turn, then it wouldn't be as bad because you're not rolling the dice, like relying on that unit to tank. But what we can say, of course, is that if Gohan does get his guard active, he is very, very good because obviously guard is very powerful. And once he guards, he gets a, higher a high chance to additional super as well as extra guard for four turns. Well, guaranteed guard, I should say, for four turns, which is obviously very good. You need it to proc that first time, but once it does, then obviously he's covered for the next turn. Um, and then the other thing about him that I do think is very good is the fact that he gives 50% defensive support to all allies, and then he gives entrusted will characters 2 key and 30% attack. And like characters like the STR Namek Goku and some other good units, you know, that you can run him on teams alongside are on Entrusted Will to get that extra attack buff and key. But then even if they're not, a 50% defensive support is really, really good. Like this guy could quite easily fit into some teams just as a slot three, like floating unit, just there to provide you that defense. And because his guard is active for four turns after he takes a hit, if he activates his guard in slot three, it means the next time he appears in slot three, his guard is actually still going to be active on that turn. And then it's when he then comes back again that you have to roll the dice for his guard. So I know a lot of people don't like the chance to guard. I don't either. And I know some people will exclude units that have that kind of um, ability even from being in their like top five lists. But I think Gohan is still very good even if he's not guarding obviously he greatly raises defense for one turn on super he has that defensive support so if you want to use him as a th uh, slot three floating unit even if he doesn't get his guard off he's really only going to be getting caught out by like super attacks or the hardest red zone bosses so i do think he is very good and then obviously when he does guard he looks very very impressive and of course he's the best link partner for tech ultimate gohan who a percentage i don't even know if it's large anymore but a certain percentage of the community still absolutely loves so he does have that going for him as well so moving on to number four i have the str namek goku so str namek goku i have at number four very similarly for the reasons why gohan is at number five and that is because of the rng factor with his guard but I will say, for me personally, after having used him a bunch, now that he's got his EZA, I'm definitely more impressed with him than I thought I would be after we saw his details. I mean, you guys, if you're watching this, you've probably seen the video that I put up. If you haven't, you should go check it out. But I did a video showcasing him in the Cell Max event. And with his guard active, he actually lived the super attack from cell max and considering that event is really not designed for him to be used in i talked about it in that video it's very difficult to get him to transform early because the two first phases are really easy and then the last phase obviously hits like a truck and if you haven't transformed by the time you get to the last phase then even after he supers and uh is raising his own defense he takes quite a bit of damage from even normal attacks from tech cell max but once you get that transformation uh, he starts cooking on a very great level. He Once you transform into the Super Saiyan Goku, you start to infinitely stack defense. You can get his defense high enough to the point where even if he doesn't guard, he still actually does tank reasonably well. Now, obviously, again, not against like, you know, type neutral red zone boss super attacks and stuff like that. But when he gets his guard off, he also has the guaranteed guard for four turns. Uh, he then also gets a high chance to crit. 
So full additional is the way to go for him. Get those extra stacks. Get potential crits. Um, he can just look really, really good. On the turns where he's looking his best, he's dropping like 8, 9 million attack stats. And then defending everything for double digits. And like I say, tanking Cell Max's super attack for like 400k. Which, there's not a lot of units in the game that can do that. So I do actually think Namek Goku is a lot better than people give him credit for. I just can't put him any higher on the list because of the RNG. He has the same RNG factor as Gohan. Now, if you want to switch Gohan and Namek Goku, I'd be perfectly fine with that. For all the reasons that I mentioned for Gohan, like with him having the defensive support, whereas uh, Namek Goku, you're not really going to throw him on a team and use him as like a third slot floating unit. Um, if you need one final unit to build out your team, whereas you could do that with Gohan. So I'd be perfectly fine with 4 and 5 being switched. Um, I don't know about higher up moving either of these two, but 4 and 5 being switched I would be perfectly fine with, to be honest. So then we get on to number 3, and we have AGL Super Saiyan Blue Vegeta, who transforms into Super Saiyan Blue Evolution. Obviously he's a pure Saiyan's lead, which gives him a huge amount of value straight away, right? Huge category, very, very good lot of the best units in the game. Um, he raises attack and defense on super. He can launch the additionals. Now, on his best turn, because we've talked about best case scenarios for both the two RNG units so far. Vegeta's not as much of an RNG unit, but on his best turn, he can launch four super attacks, and each one raises his attack and defense. So on his best turn, you could probably make an argument for him being number one, I would say. But obviously, again, RNG, you're not always going to get that. You could get the two additional attacks that are just normals, and then you don't get the hidden potential attack. So he still looks decent on those turns, because he'll put out a decent attack stat. He raises defense on super. He is building up defense with each attack performed. Once you've done five attacks, he's then fully maxed out. And then, of course, he has the chance to evolve and become the Blue Evolution Vegeta. Once he becomes the Blue Evolution Vegeta, obviously everything just gets rat ratcheted up a little bit. And he starts dealing more and more damage. Has a built-in chance to crit that builds up to 70%, which is really, really good. So on his best case scenario turn, he's doing like four supers that are all crits. And so on those turns, again, you could quite easily make an argument for him being at number one. But... It's not something you see all the time, and compared to some of the other units that we're going to talk about, he doesn't have as much of the utility. His links are not terrible, but obviously, whilst he does have Prepared for Battle, he does have Super Saiyan, unlike the LR. But he's got, like, Tournament of Power, Warrior Gods, so he doesn't fit in as well with, like, just other pure Saiyan units. Like, especially if you have running a bunch, a team of, like, full of Super Saiyans. And obviously, he's a Vegeta, so he has links like Royal Lineage. But he's still very, very strong. Now, one thing you have to remember, and I saw people talking about this in the comments of the previous tier list, is I do still think a lot of these placements are very, very close. Like, I said you probably couldn't move Namek Goku or Gohan up to above, like, four, in my opinion. But when it comes to these top three, I feel like you could cycle their order around a bit, and I probably wouldn't care. Like, if you had Vegeta at number one, and you had my number one at number three, I could probably see the arguments for that. So, just because I have Vegeta at number three, that obviously doesn't mean I think he's bad. We have a weird trend in the community where as soon as someone thinks a unit isn't the best unit anymore, that somehow equates to them saying that they're bad now. Um, but no, Vegeta, very, very strong, very, very good. The only downside, of course, to him is if you're running double him leads to run up your Saiyans team, if he's floating in the third spot, he's not really offering anything to the team. No support, doesn't have a crazy link set. But on his own, he is obviously very, very good. And I know some people would put him above this next one. But I do have a soft spot for the villain units. So at number two, I have AGL Turles. Now, AGL Turles, he can require a little bit of RNG. Obviously, against a extreme type enemy, he's not going to be as good because you don't get that 40% defensive buff. His link set is good uh, for an extreme team, right? He has, he has links like Brutal Beatdown, Thirst for Conquest, Big Bad Bosses. Then if you want to run him on like a pure Saiyans team, at least he has Saiyan Warrior Race prepared for battle. Obviously, he has Fierce Battle, which works for both of those teams as well. So I did mention Vegeta's links, but this guy, he can slot into any team you want to run him on. Like with a bunch of super class Saiyans or with a bunch of extreme non-Saiyans. Because he has a couple of links that will fit in very nicely with all of those. And then yeah, if you are against a super enemy, 3 key and 40% attack and defense to all allies is pretty crazy. 
And then even just the 40% attack buff when you're against a uh, extreme class enemy. Now remember, he's not like unusable against extreme class enemies. I've seen screenshots of no item runs against Broly in the red zone that have uh, Turles on the team. And one of the reasons for that is because you have a 30% chance to transform for three turns when HP is 80% or below to become the what they just call Turles Boost. But the uh, Turle is boosted by the Fruit of the Tree of Might. Now, he infinitely stacks attack and defense on his super attack. And he keeps these stacks when he detransforms. So, if you can get lucky, especially in something like Red Zone Broly, where you transform early with him, get a couple of supers off, because he's another unit that is worth giving him a decent amount of additional. Get a couple of supers off, and then detransform. He actually can transform again. Um, and so he can end up stacking up to look insane. Like when he's in this form, um, he puts out attack stats and power that can easily rival that Vegeta. Now, obviously, once Vegeta starts getting additional supers, as I already said, he can start looking like, you know, the best unit. But he definitely works very, very well uh, as a support. And then they did fix his major issue that when he transforms, he still gives allies three key. So he is still providing a little bit of support. Plus, he recovers 20% HP at the start of the turn and nowadays with 200% leads we're rocking teams that have like 700k HP so 20% is 140,000 HP which is a lot like if he's not taking a super he's going to be healing you more than the damage he takes pretty much every turn so he is very very good uh, very good support unit again he's like I feel like he's a must run support unit for every single team that he's on Except for maybe some red zone stages, especially with like tech bosses, right? Um, but yeah, if you can put him on the team, he's really, really good for support. As I already said, I know a bunch of people consider Vegeta better than him. If you want to put Vegeta over him and have Turles at number three, I certainly would not be uh, big mad about that. I can see the arguments for it. And so, of course, number one, you probably guessed by process of elimination, is physical future Gohan. Now, I am by no means a hybrid stan. I argue with Minato, Alan, all those other people on Twitter all the time. But future Gohan, I was skeptical about him at first because, honestly, at first, I didn't even bother running him if I didn't have a Trunks on the team to get that extra 120% attack and defense. But he is very, very good. In fact, last night on stream, when we recorded the Goku and Gohan with the LR Goku rotation, which I think that video went up earlier today, um, I was very impressed I used him on that team. So he builds up damage reduction as the turns go on. Um, he already has 30%, and then he builds up an extra 28%. So he's going to have 58% damage reduction. Uh, the less HP remaining, the more defense he has. So if you take a big hit from like Cell Max or Broly or something on the turn before, and when you go into the next turn, he's going to have very high defense as well as the damage reduction. He greatly raises his defense on super attack as well. So whilst he can function as a slot one unit, he's very, very good defensively if he's in slot two or three. So very, very strong. I think he probably needs a Trunks on rotation to absolutely cement him as like the number one spot. But as I said, recently having used him a bunch without a Trunks, I actually can see just how good he is even without a Trunks on the rotation. And then having that Trunks is just like the icing on the cake. But again, as I said, you know, all of this comes down to personal preference. If you don't like ever running a Trunks, like you only want to run like a you know, hybrids team with all Gohans or like a Goku family team so you can't run a Trunks um, and so you don't just don't really ever like using this guy because of those situations, then that's perfectly fine and I can understand why you wouldn't want to have him at number one. Um, but yeah, I think at his best uh, compared to some of the other units, like defense is big nowadays. Like everyone argues on Twitter whether offense or defense is more important and they're both super important. Like, the meme of, you know, the boss can't kill you if they're dead for a full offense team is true as long as you get, you know, the right RNG with the super attack placements and you're not eating supers on units that literally cannot survive them. And then the defense meta strategy is obviously legitimate as well because it might take you longer to beat an event, but if, none, if pretty much none of your units can actually die, then you obviously stand a very solid chance of winning. So as I said already, and I've mentioned multiple times, if you have these units in different placements, I wouldn't be too uh, mad about it. I think it's perfectly fine. I'm interested to hear your reasons and your uh, arguments down below in the comments section. As I said, keep it civil. But yeah, this is my overall top five 
for Easy A TURs on Global. Honorable mentions, of course, to Tech Gogeta and then God Goku, who, as I said at the beginning, you could probably argue is number one if you're against a movie boss or a pure Saiyan. So that is my top five Easy A TURs on Global. Let me know your thoughts down below in the comment section. Where would you place the units? How would you change them around? Are there any not even in the top five or, you know, the honorable mention Gogeta and God Goku that you would have in your top five? Let me know down below in the comments comment section so that is going to be it for the video guys this has been the master ningen smash that like button subscribe to the channel if you are new check out the links down below for the discord and the merch store and i will see you all again soon have a good one